in full zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. Nestor Lacanto here. Welcome back for another segment of In Full Zoom, and I'm pleased to announce our guest for this particular segment because uh, we're going to talk all things banking uh, from the Bank of Guam. Pre- President and CEO, Joaquin Leon Guerrero-Cook, and from the uh, ANZ Bank, we have Clark Shaman. He is the Regional Banking Manager, and of course, from Bank Pacific, President and CEO, Philip Flores. Off a day, gentlemen. Off a day, Nestor. Off a day, day, Nestor. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we kind of wanted to talk about uh, banking, and of course, the banking industry was uh, an essential service, so you guys remained open throughout this whole coronavirus uh, pandemic, and that's really what we wanted to focus on is just how you've uh, managed during the, um, the the crisis. And so let me start with you, Ken. How did the Bank of Guam fare? How did you guys um, handle the, uh, the virus? What did you guys do? Uh, well, when, when the, um, I guess start back to when the emergency declaration was made and, uh, you know, I guess the start of the lockdown, our first uh, response was to first, um, we, we retracted, we, we shut a bunch of branches down and our positioning there was to, more to protect our employees and, and, and also the community to reduce the number of people coming around and, and, and doing banking. Um, so that was one of the first moves we did. We shifted a lot of our staff to, uh, you know, to teleworking, working from home. Um, and, and then we also really uh, encouraged and uh, promoted our, our online banking um, services as well. Um, a couple of things we did for for our borrower, for our customers, was uh, we did a blanket. As soon as, as, soon as the uh, declaration was made, we realized, you know, there's going to be a lot of people out of work, a lot of people struggling to make ends meet. So we did a blanket uh, deferment for all of our consumer borrowers. That's all of our consumer loans and um, credit cards. Uh, a three-month deferment we granted um, pretty much right away without having to come in, without having to... Uh, make any request or, or prove any sort of um, uh, financial hardship. We wanted to people, our whole thought was to reduce the number of people needing to come into the bank. Uh, again, we were thinking safety and, and reducing the spread. And at that time, uh, we had no idea what the curve was going to look like. So we just did whatever we could to to attempt to flatten um, that curve. And, and um, you know, I'd like to say that all, all the banks, yeah, we remained open. We continued servicing uh, the community, and and I think as a whole, uh, our community did an excellent job in in um, controlling and containing the, the the virus. And and I think that's just a uh, a testament to show how how obedient we are as as a community and how well we respond to, to these things, and 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 how much really we understood the need to to all work together to to get through this thing. Yeah. How about you, Clark? How about ANZ? What was uh, your response? Sure. So um, one of the benefits of being part of a bigger group is that we had seen what the virus had done to some of our colleagues in China and in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. And so um, the positive thing for us was we felt at least we had um, some go-to protocols that seemed to be working. Um, and so what we did was we did close the doors. We opened up an additional drive through. Um, we expanded our working from home capabilities. Um, we added some capacity there. Um, but probably the most important thing that we changed was a renewal of an understanding of the mental impact that this was going to have on our employees and our customers. Um, there was going to be some physical changes, but the really lasting thing that's changed for us is our mindset It's really been um, a really strong um, new sense of of caring and family and um, trying to understand how this was going to change our lives was what we talked about the most. Um, We're still working through it. Um, We're still in the middle of it. Um, You know, two months in, it kind of feels like a new normal, but the future is going to be even different. Uh, even more different. Um, so similar to what uh, Ken had said, uh, we re-emphasize our non-face-to-face channels. Um, that's um, for a merchant customer or a commercial customer. Instead of coming into the branch, it's putting all those deposits in a bag and dropping it off. Yep. Um, for a consumer customer, it's 
really kind of getting that phone out of the pocket and figuring out how to get this connection into online banking. And for the most part, a lot of the customers were like, um, actually, this is a lot easier than I ever thought it would be. And uh, I don't know why we were resistant in the past. And so it's been nice. Um, the customers have been more willing to accept some of these alternative channels. And the employees have just been amazing. I, I think that's one thing that we'll all agree upon of the resilience and just the ability and capacity for change for our employees. So hats off to the, to the people of Guam and to, to my employees, right? All right. And Phil, Bank Pacific. Thanks, Nestor. You know, the, uh, we go through different phases in life where we learn. I mean, we're, we're much smarter at 10 than we were at 5, 50 men, and, and when we were 10, type of stuff. In this last three months, it's, you know, it's been like one of those periods going from 10 years old to 15 years old. We've all learned so much. The bank has a pandemic plan. We have tabletop exercises annually. And by chance, we were just getting ready to go do our tabletop. It was scheduled for early March. And then all of a sudden, it's no longer a tabletop. It's a real deal. So, but fortunately, we had a plan that was a basis for which you can use. Uh, Clark and Ken will tell you, and, and Ed and Mark uh, at uh, Bank of Hawaii, we came together as a team. We're already in a chat room. Uh, the Guam Bankers Association, we been trying to work more cohesively last year or so. So that helped us all out. So we all worked together. And our banks are, went through the same thing. Ken and Clark have talked about uh, employee safety, employee morale, customer safety. Uh, we granted a ton of deferments. And we still are, although it's really slowed down. Uh, all of us are seeing right now the, uh, the, the, the lines of people with the stimulus checks as they let out but 30, 40,000 checks last week. Uh, not all of them are in the Bank of Guam lobby. Because <laughs> Ken, <laughs> Ken was, would be killed. So, you know, he went to the other bankers and said, hey, you guys take some of your non-customers. And uh, we're doing that. Um, and we reduced our hours from 4 o'clock, 9 to 4, uh, through the week at 6 on the Fridays, 9 to 12 on Saturdays. We reduced it to just 5 hours, 5 days a week. Uh, 10 to uh, 10 to 2. Yesterday, because of the, uh, the all the checks being issued, we've increased it to 10 to 3. Probably we'll go back to our normal schedule, previous schedule, when uh, Ken's mother puts us in condition 3. I will say that whenever the banks out of trouble, we go to Ken and say, can you talk to your mom about this? Yeah, would. <laughs> we, 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 we would joke about that. But we're, uh, you know, we're fierce competitors, but we're really trying to help each other as we go through this. I know with our employees, we've, we've incorporated teams. You don't need all your employees at least at the front line when, uh, when there wasn't much traffic. So I'll work today and you'll work, you're off today and vice versa for tomorrow type of stuff. Distancing, especially like if you're in IT where everybody's like in a bunker uh, or accounting where everybody's close, uh, where you're having people work in different conference rooms and the training room. Uh, just to get people away from each other. And of course, as, as Clark and Ken said, use other platforms. You don't have to go to the bank to come to the bank. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Yeah, I think, I think everybody's kind of alluded to it and, and what you guys have done with customer-facing services and technology being what it is. Do you think there's going to be more and more a movement in that direction where um, you're going to rely more on online uh, services? And what does that say about the future of brick-and-mortar um, um, banks? Ken? <laughs> um. Well, so, I mean, we have, we've seen what has happened with our non-facing um, channels, uh, whether it's an ATM, uh, online banking, mobile banking. We, we've seen numbers just, I mean, for, for so many years, banking as an industry has, has struggled. I mean, at least I'll speak for Guam uh, specifically. It, it's been a struggle to have people adopt to these, you know, non-traditional methods of banking, meaning everyone 
going coming into your branch is a part of everyone's life. It's a social uh, setting. You know, people like to see their tellers. They have their favorite branch managers, what have you. Um, and and this whole uh, situation, the pandemic, has really forced people to to change. And and so that adoption has has just skyrocketed uh, for us. I mean, our we used to struggle to hit. I think on our ATM and, and mobile deposit capture, where you use your phone to uh, deposit a check. I mean, we, our, our need was like around 2% of, of deposits were on that channel. And, and now it's, it's, it's gone up to almost 20%. So, I mean, it's, it's, really, um, it's really grown. And, and I, hope that, I hope that sticks after this. I hope people continue to use it for transactional purposes like depositing checks and, and obviously using your ATM card and, and uh, check cards for, for purchases as opposed to cash. Um, so that, that's a great behavior shift. Um, but as far as brick and mortar goes, um, I think with all the tech, there still will be a, a place for brick and mortar. I think there's still things people want to come in and, and talk to a, a, a banker for. I think the, the role of a teller or the role of a bank employee will change to become more of a uh, advisory uh, role as opposed to just someone to cash and, and transact on, a, on an account for you. So, so that's some of the things we're looking at. Um, and of course, with this, this shift to tech, I mean, you'll need to grow your back office support is another big, big piece of it, right? So we, we've seen in, in, in conjunction with the increase in um, these online deposits and ATM deposits and a lot of people are doing self-serve uh, type transactions, uh, our contact center, our, we call it our familiar contact center, has gotten a lot busier so we've had to actually expand on on, on in that department as well so um you know i mean i mean we're slowly uh reopening branches up um so so we're we're, we're returning to that uh that that mode or that that channel as well but but i'm hoping that the uh, the online adoption does does stick and and people continue to use it because it's just but like like Clark said, it's it's not as difficult as as people think it is. It's not as scary once you've tried it and and gotten used to it. It's actually a, you know, I mean, you could be at the beach and depositing your your check. You don't need to go drive in and 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 stand in even a ten minute line or a five minute line to to make a deposit. You just no line at all. So so it has been um, it has been very good for in in that regard. And and yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you'll see brick and mortar go away. But I just think with the purpose you visiting a brick and mortar uh, branch or physical location will change. How about you, Clark? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, more technology, less um, customer facing um, services? Uh, yeah, so I would actually say so the customer facing services are becoming online services. Um, it still faces the customer. It still makes it available for them to do everything that they'd hope to do. Um, what our branches are for are for meaningful conversations. It's those conversations that matter. It's the conversations about the home loans. It's a conversation about what I'm going to do with my business. It's much less about making a wire uh, because that's actually really easy. You can fill out the information that we need online and you can do most of that online. Um, in terms of investment, so investment absolutely has moved away from bricks and mortar to blocks and bytes, right? So just because you don't see um, the bank of the past have been columns and pillars and strength and what you could see in terms of um, the bulwark of the bank. But that same bulwark exists not necessarily in the walls of the bank of the, of the, um, of the vault, but it's in the firewall of the information that we have and that we maintain and we move across the world very safely and securely. So course of history, you see people moving from money in their mattresses to money in the banks, the easier and easier and safer and safer it got. Um, and now it's the same thing, uh, people moving their activities from in a branch to online, the easier and easier and the safer and safer it gets. Yeah, and Phil, what do you think? Do you agree with that? I agree 100% with both what Ken Clark uh, has said. You know, it, it, about 15 years ago, we came up with a new verb, Google. I'm going to Google you, okay, mister? You know, we just come up with another new verb, Zoom. I'm going to Zoom you, Nestor. 
and it's all yeah. a transition. It's not like we're we're making a change. The change has already been made. It's just going to get greater as we go along. And and Kim was talking about the behavior, trying to get individuals to go online as opposed to have to come eyeball to eyeball because we're, we're a pretty close society here in our islands and we like the eyeball to eyeball. Um, but the one I find Ken the hardest is Palau. And uh, Palau, of course, they're, really their internet didn't get decent until maybe 18, 24 months ago. But sometimes uh, Palau is our busiest office uh, of the six and we're trying to get them out of it, go online, to go to the mobile app. They just won't. And sometimes I think this is nothing. I'm not trying to say something wrong about Palau, but sometimes I think they come to the bank because they've got nothing else to do, and they like to see people, and it's air conditioned. But the we, we'd like to get – I know over the years our lobby traffic has really gone down despite the number of customers growing. But we'd like to, we'd like to bring – the online delivery is a service and it's much more convenient for the customer. It's more, uh, it's more efficient for the bank. So we're going to continue to see that grow. And we hardly saw anybody in our lobby for the last, maybe the last eight weeks to the last two weeks. Uh, whereas now because of all the checks coming out, it's swamped. In full zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. I wanted to shift now to the real uh, life impacts of the, the pandemic. Of course, a lot of people uh, lost their jobs, are struggling financially. Um, we've got this um, federal um, stimulus money uh, that's now coming in. But um, I know that banks have in the interim, like I think several of you mentioned, that you know, you're deferring some of the payments. So, um, what do you foresee in the next um, year or so with regard to that? Um, do you see um, more people as they struggle um, in, um, not being able to meet their credit card, their um, loan payments, and maybe even their mortgage payments? What are you guys, what's your, pull out your crystal ball and tell me what you think this is going to have uh, an impact on your customers? Ken, let me start with you. Uh, um, I guess it, it's, hard, it's hard to say. I mean, I think obviously as a, as a banker, you're always kind of thinking, uh, worst case, right? Uh, you're always thinking, okay, well, well, the worst case is, um, you know, I, we haven't really talked about any types of specific numbers, but I think all the banks will will agree that there are going to be, uh, there will be a need for additional uh, reserves. I think everyone is, is, is on that same page as far as, you know, from businesses not being able to reopen, um, and, uh, you know, obviously with the tourism not coming back for a while, it's going to have a huge impact on, on the economy. But to offset that, and I think what, what we still don't really have a really good grasp on yet is, is how all this federal stimulus is going to actually support that void created by the lack of, of tourism. Um, so, I mean, at first I would think about it, it's like, oh, it's going to be horrible until tourism comes back. Um, then you have all this stimulus money that's coming in and, and it won't get us to where we were, say, at end of 2019, but it might be enough to kind of keep things going. I mean, I don't, it, it's not, I'm not saying that situation's going to be great or, or maybe not even good, but I don't think it'll be as uh, disastrous or as horrific as, as initially um, I'm thought, but that's, that's maybe that's the op, that's the optimistic side of me speaking um, from from um, from a banker side. I mean, we are considering, you know, we are looking at everything. It's it's still so early on the the pandemic. It's only been, you know, it seems like we've been living like this for for years, but it's only been a couple months. Uh, so so the the um, the impact I think are still just going to start 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 showing up i mean we we've seen these stimulus checks coming out now so you see a lot more people driving there's a lot more uh, activity than there was you know two weeks ago um but it's still where where that activity will get to i mean i i, I have i i don't want to go on my, my crystal ball is 
is murky. I don't know what what it. There's no there's no exact uh, image I'm seeing in there, but I'm but I'm hoping that with all this stimulus and and things starting to reopen, um, that people will uh, be out there and 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 doing things. Uh, obviously, it won't be where we need it to be without tourism. But I think this federal money is gonna gonna play a big role in in at least keeping us going, which is the intent of it. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, how about sorry, you, Clark? Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, same question here. What, what, what do you see? Um, it's going to be a difficult road ahead. It's going to be a long, difficult recovery. I, I think the earlier and the faster that we accept that, I think the better. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, a month ago, we talked a lot about how to deal with the impacts of the pandemic on public health. Uh, but a lot of the same comments and concepts apply to financial health. That is, um, what we're trying to do with the stimulus is to flatten the curve of the impact on businesses. Um, if all businesses had the same, had to absorb all the same difficulties all at the same time, then our infrastructure wouldn't be able to have the capacity to, to deal with it, just like our hospitals wouldn't have had the capacity to deal with an influx. And so what the stimulus will do is flatten the curve. But unfortunately, the other element that we have to come to grips with is it is going to impact the most vulnerable businesses the first, at, at, at the beginning. Um, those businesses that had um, longer and broader reserves, cash reserves, are obviously going to be able to bear the brunt of the significant change in demand for their services and products. But at the same time, they have the time to re-engineer what they're going to do and how they're going to deliver it. And if they need to make a change in their business model, um, they have the um, reserves to implement that change. But unfortunately, there will be businesses that don't have that capacity, that didn't have the reserves um, to be able to change and to be able to adapt. Um, and... I hope to be the one to say that this isn't going to have an impact, but it is going to have an impact. And we have to be able to understand and diagnose and be able to support and give the right care to those businesses in the right means. Um, but unfortunately there also will be businesses that go out of business and we have to be able to understand that. We have to be able to respond to that as an Island community. So um, I don't mean to be Dr. Doom, but I do also need to bring a sense of, of reality to the situation. All right, Phil. Is there anything you can share that maybe is the less, less doom <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, you know, what is is, and it's going to be tough. And we talk about unemployment, how high, or, how high it is, what we say 20%, something like that. But if you go to the most vulnerable as individuals, uh, the, the weight server, uh, the guy used to work at the theater. I mean, they, in that bracket, you probably have like 40, 45% unemployment. And those are the people who are renters, uh, having a hard time paying their rent. Those are the people who have borrowed from our banks for personal loans, are going to have a hard time making those, or maybe for their auto loans. And then even people who are, thought they were okay and were spending money, how are they going to make their mortgage loans, let alone the businesses that are undercapitalized, and uh, can't take the hit of three or four months of bad revenues. Uh, Clark and Kinner Wright, they're, they're gonna suffer and a lot of them are not gonna be opening up again. Uh, I live in Toulon, I look at all the restaurants in there that are closed right now and I'm wondering how many are to be able to come back up and, and work again. But again, what is, is, and we're just gonna have to work through it. Juan went through a terrible time, uh, the late, you know, the Japanese bubble burst. Uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And the biggest advertisers, and the, then the only paper, the PDN, were the banks, were their foreclosure notices. I'm hoping we don't get to there again. Because you could see, you know, we had customers coming in. You could tell it was the first of the month because they were there making their payment and they ended up having to file bankruptcy. I'm hoping it doesn't get to there. If it does, one of the best things I can say about our banking community, my two friends here and, and the others, is that your Guam banks, are well capitalized, we're strong, and we can weather the storm. As a result, we're gonna work with our customers as much as we can to help them weather the storm. 
We're not in the business of foreclosing. We're not in the business of repoing your car. We're not in the business of taking you to court because you owe us $15,000. We're in the business of trying to make you have a better life. You can rear your children, educate your children, build that house, buy that car, start that business, employ people. And that's where we'll get back to. We actually haven't even left there. But that's where we want to get back to as soon as possible and uh, help our community because we are part of the community. What's good for Guam is good for us. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Okay, thanks. We've only got a few minutes left. But I wanted to get one more question real quickly to each of you. Maybe if you can keep wrap it up in about a minute each. Um, I want to get your um, thoughts and comments on the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Impact Disaster Loan, PPP EIDL, which was designed to help businesses uh, as we initially weather this storm. And uh, Ken, can you just start us off? Sure. Um, well, I mean, without talking any numbers specifically, I mean, the, the intent of these two programs, especially the PPP, is basically a, it was a it was a way to get free money into the hands of businesses to pay their employees again so 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 really what it is it, it is another method of of stimulus the way i look at it um because even if the employees aren't working businesses could get the loans and it's and it's free money basically it's a forgivable loan um if you use it on payroll gets money in the hands of employees and in turn, employees can then go out and, and pay bills and, you know, buy groceries, buy food. So, so on top of the stimulus checks, it's another form of, of stimulus for those businesses who did um, choose to, to take it. And, and uh, we've seen a huge number of, of, of people come in for the PPP. And um, so I think as that gets out, too, that's just additional money into the economy. That, that will be going out and we'll start seeing that circulate, right? From like, in addition to what Phil said, um, banks also are circulators of, of the money, right? We give loans out, that those, or we give money out to, in this case, PDPs, those people go and spend it, it comes back into the bank in the form of a merchant deposit, and then that goes out again to employees to pay. So, I mean, it's, it's starting the cycle. Um, and um, from, I, I think from the intent of, of Congress, uh, but putting the PPP together, which was to have people get employed, I think it's gonna it's gonna have a a positive impact on on what we're seeing now, and and I think you will start to see more economic activity. Again, it's not enough to to get us out of the funk we're in, but it definitely will will help, and it will be a a, a very good thing for for businesses who are open, who are providing services, uh, restaurants who are selling food. Uh, retail shops who have reopened their doors. It will help some economic activity go. Uh, that said, it's not, you know, where it, we want it to be or where we like it to be. But I think it will, like Clark said, could help to flatten that curve of, of the uh, impact on, on business and, and on what the economy is faced with right now. Okay, uh, real quickly, Clark, uh, what's your thoughts? A success failure of the uh, PPP and EIDL? Has it worked? Yes. How about that? I'll give you both the success and the failure of it. Okay. So the, on the one hand, the success is a really big success for Guam, because if you put the tables that have come out from the SBA and you see as a percentage of GDP, Guam is right up there around 3.5%, which is compared to all of the other states, it's right up at the top, like the top 10. Um, so we've responded to obtaining some of these funds really well. So that large percentage of GDP tells us a couple things. Number one, it tells us that most of the businesses on Guam do qualify for small business administration lending um, compared to maybe like a Texas or, or something like, like that that have really large corporations that would, that would size themselves out. Guam, for the most part, has a really thriving small business community. Um, number two, it shows that a lot of our businesses and industry is very labor intensive. And that kind of makes sense with your mind. You got, okay, so tourism, hotels, restaurants even our construction industry, it makes sense that a large amount of the GDP is, is built by labor and is built through paychecks. Um, the last that I'll sort of put to the side is the banks actually have done an okay job of supporting this. 
And I know that there's been a lot of chatter both on, you know, other talking heads on the national scale about how the PPP, the delivery has been a failure. It's been difficult. Um, I'll say this. It's a brand new program that has been able to allocate $600 billion to somewhere like 3 million loans over the course of like six weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, absolutely. At day one of that, and even at day 10 of that, and even at day 20 of that period, there were bumps, there were changes. But this is kind of the agility of the nation to be able to not think everything through, but have trust in the institutions to be able to get people there and adjust the small adjustments along the way. So overall, I believe it's been a success. Um, we're still getting money and funding through to our customers. And I realize that it is slower than they'd hope. Um, because the one thing about the PPP that you have to understand is it's not, the money's not coming from the government just yet. The money is coming from the banks. We are creating a loan. We are establishing a credit relationship. We're establishing a new relationship with customers. And it's not as though we get any money from the Federal Reserve or the SBA yet. It's all coming from the liquidity or the cash that we already have. Um, and so we have to go through our certain processes and procedures. The, the money will come later in the form of forgiveness and or a guarantee from the government. But I just like to give that a, a little bit of context. Um, a lot of people have been saying that the banks haven't been doing enough. And I'm open to that conversation. But some of the context helps out in seeing what we've actually been able to accomplish to support the small businesses here. All right. Then Jason's telling me we're out of time, but I just want to get one more question if you feel. And just as the banker emeritus, can you just give us your thoughts on uh, is our economy going to be okay in the next few months to a year? Maybe two no, years, not in the next couple of months. People are suffering. A couple of years, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But I can just follow up, and I know we're out of time, but the Guam, we have, we've made 1,700, more than 1,700 PPP loans, 196 million. And a lot of credit goes to SBA, and Ken Lujan has been very good work with all the banks here. Mm -hmm. That's it. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much, gentlemen. Um, Ken Cook from the Bank of Guam, Clark Shaman from ANZ, and Phil Flores from Bank Pacific. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Great conversation. I'm Nestor Licanto. That's in full Zoom. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care, Nestor. Bye, guys. See you guys. In full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc.